The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. It is springtime, and the father is in the garden pruning the branches. And the question is, what fruits do we bear for him? I too have been in the garden. In fact, if any of you were to see me in my yard, I have almost a laser-like focus on one particular plant this season, garlic mustard. Garlic mustard is a plant that grows about a foot and a half tall, and on its own merits, it has white flowers, it is pleasing to the eye, and you can eat the leaves in a salad. It would seem to be a fine and suitable plant. But just as the Father looks at each of us and the fruits that we bear, I spend many hours gathering thousands of these plants because what happens in community is what, is what is the God is judging us on. How it is that these plants, or ourselves, interact with others. Now in the case of garlic mustard, they're alleliopathic, a word you don't need to remember, but what it means is that they put toxins into the soil so that no other plants can grow around them, and they come to dominate the site. And while individually they seem like they bear good fruit, in community they drive everything else out. And so in order to see the whites and the pinks and the blues of the asters, in order to see the trout lily with its yellow and its red, or the trillium with its red flowers, we must pull out the garlic mustard. And so it is that we have to turn and consider what fruits we bear, and whether or not the things which are pleasing visually to the outside are in fact fruitful in the eyes of the Lord. For instance, if garlic mustard were to offer a stock IPO, people would be all over it. It's prolific. It seems to have all these good things, but our ways are not God's ways. 
Now, I'm not asking for a holy war against garlic mustard, and I am not declaring this plant to be evil, but I have spent many hours reflecting on this plant. The vine is the image that we have today, and the vine is an image which is repeated in the Old Testament. The vine is Israel. But as the Old Testament progresses, the vine falls into disrepute. Over time, the vine goes wild with branches that bear no fruit. And those branches that do bear fruit bear wild grapes, which are not useful for wine or for eating. And here it is that Jesus asks us to return to the image of the vine. But after the resurrection, the vine has been redeemed. God is at work. The Father is pruning and Jesus is the vine. When it comes to the fruits, we see the judging action when we look in the reading from Acts with Saul. Saul arrives in the community and he comes to see the disciples, but they judge on the fruits. And Saul is known to be a persecutor of Christians, doing unspeakable things and supporting others and trying to crush the Christians. And so it is that Barnabas comes to the disciples and asks them to reconsider that the fruits that Saul bears, despite his earlier actions, are indeed good, that God is in them. Saul is out in the marketplace and he is preaching. He is preaching the word of God. He is proclaiming Jesus Christ and these are the good fruits, and the disciples need to reconsider. And so, he is accepted. He moves about freely. The new standard is applied. We judge Saul on his fruits, and he goes back into the marketplace, and he continues to preach to the point where people try to drive him out and kill him. And this is where things get even more exciting. For his own sake, the disciples take him and send him off into Palestine. And while it would seem that he's been exiled, we are told that instead, the community in Palestine grows in both peace, accord, and numbers. He bears good fruit, and the vine grows. And so it is that we have a new way of thinking. Previously, we would have the Pharisees and the scribes and they would take us and they would have us look at the Torah and they look at the precepts and all the rules that we must follow and they would judge are we or are we not in accord with God based on how many of the precepts we keep and how carefully we keep them but this is not as God judges indeed God judges by our fruit and indeed in 1 John, in the reading we have today, we are told it is not what we say that is what we judged on. Let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. And so here we are, and we must ask ourselves, what fruits do we bear for him? Indeed, what are the fruits that we are judged by? And we are told the keeping of the commandments, and to love one another as Jesus told us how. Indeed, it is worth reflecting that this very weekend, billions of people will stop and they will reflect on the life of Jesus, his words, his teachings, because of the good fruits that he has borne. He is the ultimate test of good fruits. And so it is, how do we do with others? How do we love one another? And consider again, what fruits do we bear? And it is worthy of considering what fruits we bear because Jesus tells us that we cannot do good apart from him. Indeed, right now, any time where one of us is able to bear fruit and do good work, Jesus is in us and acting through us. And this transforms things. In the Gospels, when Jesus performs a miracle, when there is an act, 
when something miraculous occurs, Jesus says, it is for the glorification of my Father. And now, it is turned on its head. And we are told that when we bear good fruits, when Jesus is working through us, when we are keeping the commandments, when we are loving one another, when we act in community, when we support one another, that we are in fact helping for the glorification of God. We have a role in the glorification of God, and it is through Jesus Christ. And so we return to the vine, we return to our weeds, and we return to our lives after we finish here today. It is, again, worthy of consideration. It is springtime. The Father is in the garden pruning the vine. What fruits do we bear for him?